Today I'm going to go through the process of setting up Diversion. Diversion is the ad blocking uh, tool used on Asus Merlin router to block uh, ads for, from devices within the network. Let's get started. As you can see, I'm currently logged into the router right now. Before we get started, there are a few prerequisites that is needed to install and run Diversion on a Merlin router. First of all, you need a supported router that uh, supports the Asus Merlin firmware. You need to enable JFFS custom scripts. You would need a USB storage flash drive device. You would need to enable SSH on the router. You would also need to reserve a few IP address, static IP address on the network. And you would need an SSH client such as PuTTY to gain access to the router. So first of all, let me log into the router here and scroll down to enable the JFFS custom scripts. So we'd go under administration, system. We would see on the persistent JFFS2 partition, we would be enabling JFF custom scripts and configs. By default, this is set to no, so we'll change it to yes. We'll scroll down lower. And under service, enable SSH, it is set by default to no, so we're going to only enable it for our LAN only. You would leave all the other settings as default. We'll be using port 22, which is the default for SSH. And we're going to select apply. Next, we're going to go to the LAN setting, the DHCP settings. We'll go to LAN, DHCP server. Currently, the DHCP pool starts from 192.168.50.2 to 254. So I'm using a class C subnet. So I am going to make available, uh, reserve some IPs from the pool, excluded from the pool. So I'm going to start from 6. So the IP address is 192.168.50.1 to 5 would be static or you can use it for any reservation. Anything from .6 to 254 would be issued automatically through the DHCP pool. So I'm going to select apply. Next, I am going to plug in my USB storage flash drive to my router currently. It's an 8 gig USB storage flash drive. Next, we're going to actually log into our router with uh, PuTTY, which is our SSH client. So I'm going to put in the IP address 192.168.50.1, which is a router IP address. And I'm going to log in with my password which is the same password you'd use to log into your router graphical user interface. Next, we would log into the Merling uh, Terminal Manager, AMTM. Okay, as you can see, um, it did find my disk. So what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, make sure that all of the the router is currently updated, so we're going to use U to check for any script updates. Okay, so we have everything is green, so that means everything is currently up to date. So we go back to our menu, we select M. We would select I for all available scripts and tools. Okay, these are all the tools that is available in the AMTM script. Let me just open this a little bit wider so we can see. So first thing we need to do is we need to format our disk. So I'm going to use FD. I select one for continue, for yes. So it's find my uh, flash drive, which is an 8 gig flash drive. So I'm going to select one. It would ask me if I want to continue because it would delete all the information on that mount. So I'm selecting one for continue. 
I am going to do one partition, which is number one, option one. Next, we're going to be using the ext4 partition format. So I'm going to select four. We're going to enable journaling, which is recommended. We're going to set a label. And we're going to just call it a swap. Do you want to continue one for yes? And it would ask you if you're sure you want to do it. So it's going to actually do the formatting right now. So this part would not take that long. It should take uh, within a minute. If you want, you can fast forward the video. Okay, right now it is finished. So what it says is your router will now reboot for the changes that take effect. So I press enter to continue. Right now my router is currently rebooting. This just give me a warning that actually the router has been rebooted. So our putty terminal session, SSH session um, was closed. So we will reconnect with it as soon as the router finishes its reboot. This normally takes about uh, less than a minute. So it should be finished pretty soon. Okay, my, it should be back up and running now. So let me restart our session. Okay, so I'm gonna put in my password. And I'm gonna log back into EMTM. I'm going to select I. What we're going to do now is we the second part of this is we have to create a swap file so we're going to select sw select one for yes it found our drive partition that we just formatted which is one ask me to create the swap file so one for yes the Minimum for the swap file for diversion is 250 megabytes. Um, if you want to also use that flash drive for any other um, scripts or add-ons for the Merlin firmware, you can format it as a recommended two gigs, as you can see here, and it's required for Skynet. But since we're going to only use this for diversion, with the 250 megabytes should be sufficient. So I'll select one. This normally takes a little longer. So um, you can pause the video here and you can come back after it. it's finished. I'm just gonna pause it so you won't have to sit through uh, looking at the progress bar. Actually, it's went, it's going faster than I thought, so <laughs> there is no need to do that. Okay, so right now it's finished. Create the swap file as you can see here. So it's just one more part we'd have to do right now. So we're going back into I, and we're going. To actually do the installation of the diversion, which is option one to the top here. And I would select one for yes, let's continue. So it brings me to the diversion installation uh, page. 
So install die version now, one for yes. Okay, so it does a quick check of all these information here and it says all clear to install die version 4.3.3. So we have two versions of diversion. We have the diversion light and we have the diversion standard. The diversion light installs diversion and endware using the IP address 0, .0, 0.0.0 to divert block domains. Whereas the difference with diversion standard is that it installs diversion endware and its pixel server TLS package, which is used to divert the ad blocking to a specific IP address, which is what we would be using as we reserve the IP address 192.168.50.2. So that's the IP address we're going to be using. So I'm going to select two. You will need to enter the IP address next. So the IP address that we are going to be using for the pixel server TLS would be 192.168.50. Dot two. Dot one is our router IP address, so I'll just pick the second one. Enter. It's checking to make sure that it's not in the DHCP pool. So right now it's available, so we're going to be enabling login. So we want for yes. And we're going to press enter to acknowledge. And then select the device to install Entware. So it would see our swap partition one. And we're going to be installing the 64 bit Entware version, which is what is recommended. And we press enter to do the installation right now. So right now it's going through the process of installing the Entware, first of all, package and then it would be installed in the diversion uh, package afterwards. As you can see, the endware is completed, so it's actually running the diversion now. So it's actually setting up the, the directory structures and actually installing all the necessary files needed. Right now, it's generating a TLS a certificate. It's completed creating that certificate itself now. Right now it just downloaded and write all the domains that it's actually blocked. And that is 176,317 so far. Okay, so right now the installation is actually completed. So I'm just going to wait for a bit here for it to finish okay so this is our screen here for diversion 4.3.1 one thing i would do is i am going to go into more options i'm going to select o and i am going to the add or turn on the automatic update counter so i'm going to select au I'm going to select yes, it's telling you that it's currently turned off, so I'm going to enable it right now. And as you can see, it's enabled right now. Right now, we do not have any blocked ads since we did the installation. There is 176,317 uh, blocked domains in the specific host file. 
the standard is uh, the version is standard, which is enabled. And this is the ad blocking IP address. And it just gives you basic information here. Now let's go back out. Going to select E for exit. Okay, and this is at the AMTM uh, terminal. That uh, just gives you a quick rundown of what is actually installed so far on your router. So let me go and perform a test right now. First of all, let me reboot the router just to make sure that everything is set up and good to go. So I'm just going to issue a reboot from my graphical user interface. So I'm just waiting for the router to reboot right now. close my browser so that no cache would remain just in the event that it had some cache stored on my browser okay it seemed to be back up right now so let me test uh, our ad blocking from a site so let's try Okay, so it's currently loaded and I'm not seeing any ads right now on the speedtest.net. Um, we can validate or verify that ads were being blocked just by going into the MTM and we can select diversion, which is option one. It's updating the ad counters automatically. And as you can see here, it blocked 19 ads today and um, the T is for today and the W is for the week and the N is for uh, the both totals since the actual since were actually installed so as you can see um, diversion is currently blocking all ads and it is working as intended so let me exit out of here. I am just going to show you how we can actually uninstall it if you no longer require to have diversion installed on your router. So first of all, what you need to do is go into diversion. Look at op more options. Okay, and we're going to go to the diversion standard. It's Mac enabled, so we're going to select D. And it's asking us here if we want to restart, disable, reinstall, update. These are the options, but what we're going to do is we're going to select one for disable, which is going to disable diversion first. Once that is done then we would go back into D and we would select option number six which is to uninstall diversion so it's going to uninstall everything this will remove we have two options we have this will remove diversion from the router to save essential uh, files you can actually do a backup but we don't want to do any backup um, you can select D if, to use a backup if you would like, but I'm not going to do any backup of anything. And here we have two options. Uh, if we just want to uninstall diversion and leave Entware install, if you have other application or scripts that uses Entware, I would recommend you use one. But since I don't have anything else using Entware, I'm going to select two. And this just gives you the option to actually proceed. So I'm selecting one. 
So it's just stopping all the services and actually doing all the removal. And as you can see, Diversion is currently removed right now. If you want to look for Diversion, it would normally be on the Once you go on the land, you will have a diversion tab right here. But since we uninstall it, the tab is no longer here. Hope this tutorial have been helpful to you. If it was helpful to you, please like and subscribe and share it with your friends. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.